All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rechak I want to send double honors to the elders and apostles, that great millstone that rule well. Peace, love, and respect as always to your elect brothers out there laboring in this ministry throughout the four corners of the earth in sincerity and in truth and presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice to do so. So I'm going to get straight into this lesson. And Lord willing, this is an edifying lesson through the Holy Spirit, Harakak Dash. You know, and um, I'm not sure of the exact title, but it's on the bounds of showing mercy. You know, showing mercy. And when I say that, show mercy to those that are without and to those that are within. You know, and the reason I say to those that are without, because we were once at a point in time alienated from the ordinances of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? Alienated mean what? We lost our way over time. All right? Before we were part of this ministry, we were walking around blind, groping at noonday. All right, as it says in First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, which I like to reference a lot, you know, we are not the children of the darkness or of the night anymore. Because what? The Father of lights, being the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, whom this world ignorantly calls God, have shined his light on us, being this word, you know, which when you go into the book of St. John, the first chapter, when it says the word was with God, Okay, that's talking about who? His only begotten son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whom Yahweh Shah Mashiach is our Lord and Savior. All right, so we're not of that, that fold anymore, but we have to remember to show mercy, man. Okay, now and on, on the flip side, as far as the, the men that are in the know, we have to we definitely show mercy to these brothers, man. You know, just because you're not doing, for, for an example, all right, you may have a brother that you know that that slipped. You know he did something that was off. You know, and and you yourself may be on point. You know the spirit is working on you to you know to do things accurately, but you come down on the brother with you no know, um with no mercy. You know what I'm saying? You come down on him with cruelty, as it says in um the book of James. It says, "Be not many masters." You know when that's talking about not coming down on Jake so goddamn hard, man. You know, were you not at a point in time uh, uh, guilty of things? Are we not at this point in time still in our sins? Is not our righteousness as filthy rags? You know, so to not, to not show mercy on the nation of Israel, whether they are in the know or without, you know, hey, it's, I'm going to get the precept. There's a precept in uh, Proverbs, which I'll pull. You know, you're pretty much bringing damnation on your own spirit, man. You know, so I'm going to get straight into these scriptures. And like I said, Lord willing, this is edifying. This is first off and foremost. This is Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. It says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. You know, because that, and that you have a lot of that going on in the world. And that, what do they call that hypocrisy, man? You know, if you're treating somebody a certain way, and you know, you're treating them like shit. You know, you're talking to them any kind of way, doing anything to them, but you expect them to be gentle with you, speak speak to you with respect, you know, and, and reverence you. Hey, that, that's, that's, that's hypocrisy, man. And the Most High is going to destroy the house of hypocrites. You know, let's see if I can find that. It says, um, the house of hypocrites shall be desolate. You know, and we're not to be hypocrites. I'm going to get that word. As a matter of fact, all right, so I can't find it here, but I'm going to get this word hypocrite, uh, the word hypocrites, all right, or hypocrite. So like, yeah, hypocrite, C-R-I-T-E, and I believe that precept is in, mm -hmm. Lord willing, it, Lord willing, it'll come back to me. It may be in the apocrypha. All right, but I'm going to get this word uh, hypocrite, you know. So the word hypocrite. All right. So the word hypocrite from the 1200s, it says a false pretender to virtue or religion. All right. A hypocrite stage actor, a pretender. You know, and that goes with the same things that if you don't teach, <clears throat> if you don't teach certain things or, or or if you're teaching certain things, you are to keep them and not to be as the wicked Sadducees and Pharisees. Because what did the scriptures say about them? It says 
uh, do as they say and not as they do. Okay, because why? They weren't they weren't keeping the law, statutes, and commandments at the magnitude that they were teaching it. All right, they were telling men to do these things, but hey, they they weren't keeping these things themselves. Okay. Uh, let's see. It says from the word net, a person who professes beliefs and opinions that he or she does not hold in order to conceal his or her real feelings or motives. You know, and that's 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 right on, man. You know, and the Most High is going to destroy hypocrites. I have to find that precept. You know, Abaratiza, it comes up. But I'm going to get this uh, precept here in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and 17. Okay, it was about showing that mercy, man. All right, it's the Proverbs 11 and verse 17. It says, The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubled his own flesh. You know, and who does that sound like? That sounds like Esau, Edom. You know, it says, But he that is cruel troubled his own flesh, which we are, we understand through, through a biblical prophecy that uh, Esau is going to be destroyed, man, for, for not showing mercy. Uh, to the uh, to the house of Israel or to anybody for that matter, but I, I mention Israel because we are the apple of the Lord's eye, and the things that were done to us, you know the heinous acts that were done to the nation of Israel during during our the um the time where captivity was extremely physical. You no know, back you no know, back during the eight even as late as the sixties, man. You know there was still slavery going on in the sixties, man. All right, the way that they um. You know, the, the the for for example, the um the uh Tuskegee experiment was a perfect example of how they didn't have mercy on the Native Americans. You know, and they they tested out you know syphilis on them just so they can um just so they can see how it works. That's an act of for, first and foremost is an evil act. You know, but that's having no mercy upon uh, upon a nation of people, man. You know. But it says the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. Why? When you're merciful to people, you shall receive mercy of the heavenly father. You know, I believe that's in the book of James. Uh, let's see, James, the second chapter. Let's see. So I was just reading it. Oh, here we go. So hey, this, is, this is talking about. Uh, now, it's talking about specifically how Esau Edom, which, hey, as I mentioned, he didn't show no mercy, man. As it says, James 2 and 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy that have shewed no mercy. You know, and that's not only talking about Esau Edom, that's talking about who to whom it applies. How, how can you receive mercy of the Heavenly Father if you're not dishing out mercy? It says, be ye merciful. I'll get that. Be ye merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. It says, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. All right? So I'm going to get that. Be ye merciful as your Father in heaven is, man. You know, that this is very important, man, especially with the times that we're coming into, you know, the time, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. Hey, we, we need to be praying for mercy, man. You know, praying for mercy, praying that Yahweh Shemal Shai has our backs. Praying that he doesn't jack us up too much and that he, he preserves us for salvation. Or to escape the dangers thereof. Alright? Because there will be many that uh, that will be slain. As it says in Isaiah, it says the slain of the Lord shall be many. Because the way this world is conditioned, there is no mercy. People don't show mercy to one another. Alright? They do anything to each other. And hey, that, that's just the way of America. That's the way of, that's the way these Americans are bred, man. Alright? They treat each other any type of goddamn way. They don't care about uh, nothing else. As long as they're, they're in good standings. With themselves, as long as they're satisfied with themselves, they don't give a damn how they treat anybody else, man. You know, this is Luke 6 and verse 36. It says, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful, man. And I want to get that word mercy, too. We like to go into words over here, man. You know, this is the, 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 the going into words gives the edification uh, of the scriptures that we read. You know, and the, you know, it says so it says mercy from the late 12th century, the most highest forgiveness of his creatures. Offenses, reward, gift, kindness, grace, pity, you know, unto, unto, unto those who are sincere about this thing. Because we're going to fuck up, man. That's part of this ministry. That's part of this walk. That's part of this life. You're going to fuck up. You know, had we not fucked up, you know, um, 
you know, had we not fucked up, then um, I lost my train of thought on what I wanted to say. But the Most High, He showed mercy unto us because we are we are a wicked people. We are a wicked nation. Matter of fact, He remembered we were, we were but flesh. All right, and He showed mercy because He knows His nation, man. And that's why He had these words proclaimed by the holy prophets. Because what? He knows his people and he wants you to understand why these things are happening to you and then to your people. Okay? So this is Psalm 78. And let's see. Cause this is a, this is a pretty good read, alright? Uh, I'm going to start from I'm going to start from 35, all right? Psalm 78 verse 35. It says and they remembered that the most high was their rock and the high power their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto them, lied unto him with their tongue. You know, and that was all of Israel, man. You know, at that time at that time we were coming out of the wilderness, that was all of us, man. Okay, we were we were a part of that when we were born into this wicked ass wicked ass uh, kingdom and age that we're born in. We were we you know we grew up the same way, wicked as hell, you know, worshiping idols, you know, doing all doing all types of manner of evil, committing all types of iniquities. You know, and the Most High He showed favor unto us. It says, for their heart was not right with Him, neither were they steadfast in His covenant, but He being Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, the Almighty, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath, man. All right. That's, this is this is our merciful power, man. It, he he will. At, oh, man, there's this just so many scriptures going through my head. All right. The Most High, as it says in uh, this particular scripture here. In Sirach 16 and verse 11, all right, it says, because the Most High is a balanced power, you know, let, let's not forget that, and we are to practice balance, as it says in uh, Proverbs the 11th chapter in the first verse, it says a false false balance is an abomination unto the Lord, man, all right, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 16 and verse 11, it says, and th if there be one stiff-necked among the people, it is a marvel if he escape unpunished, for mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. You know, because hey, no man goes unpunished for all his sins. As it says in Sirach 8, it says, Bind not one sin upon another, for in one thou shalt not be unpunished. But the Most High is a forgiving, forgiving and merciful and compassionate power, man. You don't have that here in America. It's Esau Edom's not merciful. The so-called white man is not merciful. Especially to the nation of Israel, all right, and it tells you that in Isaiah it says, uh, um, they they um they uh, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, that they may turn away the right of the take away the right of the needy, which is who the nation of Israel, man. They don't have mercy upon us, all right. But hey, there's gonna be a time where he's gonna pay for it, and that time is 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 coming right down the pike, man. It says as his mercy is great. So is his correction also. He judges the man according to his works. The sinner shall not escape with the spoils and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated. So the most high, that shows the balance, the true balance of, of Yahweh Shemah and the love that he has for his people, for his creation. All right. I want to finish this scripture here in Psalms. Back in uh, Psalm 78. And I'll read 38 again with 39. All right, it says, but he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he away his turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. And a perfect example of that is when you go into the book of Judges. You know, you had you had kings that were uh, going off. You know, guess what? And guess what the Most High did? He always showed favor to Israel by giving us a righteous king because he could have just left a, a wicked king above us. And we could have just been getting destroyed following their ways, man. But it says this in verse 39, for he remembered that they were but flesh. All right, we're still in this carnal, wicked, nasty ass flesh, man. All right, 
this this de degenerate flesh. We still have to we, we we still move around in this flesh, and he understand that while you're in the flesh, you do carnal things, you do fleshly things, sensual things. You know, and the and and the the flesh cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. All right, it says a carnal mind is enmity with the Most High. All right, it says a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. You know, so remember to show mercy, as it says, seventy. Time, 70 and 7 times, man. I'm going to get into this. Uh, let's see. This is Matthew. Let's see. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21. It says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but until seventy times seven. And another perfect example of, uh, of showing mercy is, is the the um the account where King da uh, King David and King Saul, you know, he had mercy upon the uh he had mercy upon Saul, having he had many a times to kill Saul for pursuing him and trying to take his life. All right. And the reason why he showed mercy was because he held Bashim al Shai. He remembered that this is the apple of the Most High's eye. You know, the Most High had a, he allowed a wicked spirit to get on Saul, man. You know, and he spared him many a times, man. You know, King David spared Saul many a times. Had time to kill him. All right, he was he was to, Saul was totally going off. You know, and this is the same spirit we're supposed to be in, not being you no know, um. Not being docile, not being God, not being fickle, but remembering the mercy of Yahweh Hashem Shai, because we expect mercy. In the time of Jacob's trouble, we we're gonna expect mercy. All right. So that's pretty much all I wanted to get into. Um, I had some other scriptures in mind; they escaped me. Um, matter of fact, did I finish that? I don't think I finished that in the book of Proverbs. The 11th chapter. Let's see. Yeah, I did finish it. All right. Uh, I'll read it one more time and then I'm going to you know, close it out. This is Proverbs 11 and 17. It says, The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. All right. You're going to trouble your own flesh. You got to remember to show mercy, man. We were once alienated from the ordinances of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. We were once them same niggas, man. You know? And coming into this ministry, as we uh, we um, we try to purge away all these these wicked things that we were once a part of, we have to remember to show mercy, man. Because you're gonna, hey, the Most High is gonna come down on you with no mercy if you continue not to show any mercy. All right, I want to get this uh, scripture because as we continue to purge off, because I I was reading that in the Book of James, the third chapter, I believe. All right. Uh, no, not James three and four, but James. Salakia. Um, let's see. It may be in two. All right. Let's see. Salakia. Um, I forget, I forget the exact precise word, but you no, know, it goes into how we, um, we're, we're, we're trying to purge off the excess. Oh yeah. So, uh, um, superfluity. All right. And the, the excess filthiness. All right. We, hey, that, and that's what we're trying to do. And we have to remember to show mercy on Akim, man. So, I, um, I know I'm right here with it, man. Ah, uh, shit. It's Lockyer. Yeah. Just bear with me, Bob. I'm just gonna type it in. Super fluidity. James one. Okay, Salakia. Yeah. This is James one and verse twenty one. It says, "Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls." And the reason why I want to get that is specifically about the superfluity, which when you go into it is access. Uh, the access of naughtiness, okay, the extra, the unnecessary 
things that will not help you get salvation if you're not trying to purify yourself. You know, and as we can try to purify ourselves, we I got to understand that uh, other brothers are trying to purify themselves, too. And they're going to do it at a different level than you may do it. So you have to remember to show some type of mercy on them, man. All right. So with that being said, you know, the point was made. And I'm going to give all praise, honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechak Wadash, the honors unto the elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Peace, love and salutation as always to the hopeful elect. Keep pushing, keep enduring in sincerity and in truth. And with all um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, sound doctrine, you know, Salakia, for the stammering of lips. All right. Hey, Shalom.